Okay, hello. Um, I wanted to make this video to do a quick little uh, introduction to the concept of mutability versus immutability. Um, okay, now the, the video is really being recorded for my INFS 1201 students, but uh, because I think I'll probably make the video public because there's like I think there's probably lots of people looking for information like this. Uh, I'm going to include a couple of things that are kind of outside the scope of 1201. All right, so for my 1201 students, um, you know what? Uh, please just consider what we just what I just did another video on, which is uh, when values come passed in as parameters, you can't modify them by the function unless they happen to be a list or, well, we're eventually going to see uh, tuples and sets and dictionaries as well, but basically, um, if you pass in something into a parameter, you can't change it, okay? Uh, I guess the same thing about true about strings. Anyway, here we go, mutability and immutability. So, here we go. This is, I've just... I'm just going to steal this one from real Python. Uh, basically, in programming, if you have an immutable object, you can't change the object's state. In contrast, a mutable object allows you to modify its state. Now, I'm going to do a quick little demo of something uh, over here in the world of Python. Uh, can you please just ignore what I've written here? Okay, I'll come back to that in a few minutes. But here we go. Take a look at this because this is what a lot of people will end up saying. Okay, we have an str hello and somebody tries to go to str at zero and we try to change it to a capital H and you click on run and it says, sorry, uh, the object does not support item assignment. And unfortunately, a lot of people will look at this and say, yeah, it's because strings are immutable. Okay, excellent. But unfortunately, it isn't that strings are immutable, which is preventing this. It's the fact that it doesn't support item assignment. You see, unfortunately, when you start to associate immutability versus being able to modify something, you see, this is completely allowed. Okay, here we go, print str. Sorry, I shouldn't be using str, but it'll still work. You see, you can change the value of str, but you can't change the individual letters, okay? And sometimes people get this mixed up with immutability, being immutability or immutability properties. It isn't entirely true. All right, now, in order to talk about this, okay, um, it seems as though can modify. So is, are strings mutable or not mutable? And according to this, it looks like a mutable object, but it looks strings can be changed, so they must be mutable. Well, unfortunately, strings are not mutable. And if you scroll down here and you read this entire thing, I mean, I'm not going to force anybody to go and do it. Um, let me see. I saw it down here somewhere. Immutable built-in types and you can see um, Python provides a rich set of immutable built-in data types such as ints, floats, complex. Okay, we don't cover complex in our course. Um, and there's even str which are also immutable even though they can store multi-vitamins or multi-value uh, items. Um, and it says here the, mass, the vast majority of built-in types are immutable. I'm like whoa. So obviously this is kind of important. Now I'm going to do something in a different language because I want to explain how I'm going to describe it as traditional programming languages work. So what I'm about to show you, okay, if you're 1201, don't worry about the weird syntax, okay, um, I will tell you exactly which things to look at, but let me show you, uh, sorry, I can't remember what the name of the file was, here we go, here's a program written in C. Now, again, don't worry about the weird syntax, I'm just interested in these four lines right here. All right, what this is doing is I have an integer called x, I put the number 45 into it, I've printed the value of x, and I'm printing the memory location of x. All right, then what I did was I took x and I added 10 to it, and I printed the value of x, and I printed the memory location of x. So. The first thing, when I run what's the value of x the first time, should be 45, and the second time it should be 55. That's not a big surprise. All right, and, well, you know, I haven't done anything except change the value of x, so really I'm expecting the addresses to be the same. And you know what, that's exactly what happens. So here we go, when I run this address demo, you can see that I've got the value is 45, the make 55, the memory location was at some weird location. Its exact location doesn't really matter in memory, but you notice that it didn't change, okay? That is what I'm going to describe as a traditional programming languages. Uh, something like, um, 
Java, C Sharp, C++, and so on. Yeah, these things are all what I'm going to call a traditional language where you allocate a space for a variable and then that variable continues to live in the same space all the time. Now, I want to do the exact same type of program in Python, and that was the one that I commented out a few seconds ago. All right, so take a look at my uh, my little program. I've said x is equal to 45. I've added 10 to it, and what I did was just before adding 10, I printed out the value, and I printed the location. So this function here called id tells me the location of where uh, the variable happens to live. Okay, so watch this. We run this. First thing we do is we look at the values of 45 and 55, and you go, yeah, that kind of makes sense. This was the value before, this is the value afterwards. But the more interesting one is what happened with the memory location. You'll notice that the memory location before was at, well, okay, I won't say all these big numbers. It was at 612. And then after adding 10 to it, suddenly became 772. The reason for this is because an integer in Python is an immutable object. Whenever you do something, it actually needs to create a new object, okay? Because you can't modify an existing object in place because ints are immutable. Okay, that's what this whole thing means. The term immutable means that you can't modify something in place. It doesn't mean you can't modify the variable, it's just the result is it internally Python has to create a new memory location and put the value into that memory location. Very, very different than say the same program written in C. It's one of the reasons why in, why this programming language I think is actually going to be just a little bit slower than say a, a program written in C. I'm not saying that it's going to be faster to the right, I'm just saying that when you execute it, it's going to be a bit slower. In fact, for those who go on and take the Intro to Data Science course, the DSAI 2201, um, one of the things that you're going to find is they're going to be talking about this thing called numpy arrays. And the whole idea behind numpy arrays was basically to avoid this type of thing. Okay. All right, but that's for a different course. Now, I want to change this around a little bit. Okay, so watch this. Instead of x being an integer, um, I'm going to change it to a string. Okay, so here we go. It's just the word string. And I'm going to say that x is equal to uh, hello. And I'm going to run this one. Let me clear the output. Here you go. Same thing. And you'll notice I end up in a different location. Again, that's because strings are also immutable. If I try to assign something, even if it's just to expand it, okay, well, it causes some issues. Oh, and of course, if I were to try and do x add 3 is equal to the letter t, well, that's going to fail because it doesn't support item assignment. All right, but now here's the really interesting one. All right, if I turn it into a list, and you know what? I'm going to put some values inside my list. So here we go. x is now a list with this, and I'm going to go to position 0, and I'm going to change the value to 99. Okay, I'm going to clear the output and let's run this. So take a look at this. This is not surprising. Okay, I've changed the value of the very first item. But what's more interesting is you'll notice that the list has not changed locations. Okay, it's still the same object. Lists are mutable objects. I can change them. I can add things to it. I can, uh, you know what, here, let's, let's try it. Um, let's see, x dot append, okay, 100. Okay, just to show you, yeah, you see, it still ends up in the same location. So you can add and remove values all that you want, and you can get away with using the same location, or sorry, Python can use the same location because lists are mutable. Okay, however, if I were to do something like this, Okay, here we go. Clear the output and run this. You'll notice that I have something very, very different. Uh, this time, you see, although lists are mutable, what I've done here is I've created a completely, completely different list. And as a result, you can see that the address has changed. Okay, so there you go. The, so the difference between a mutable versus an immutable object isn't whether or not you can change it. Okay, so it's not a read-only versus a read-write property, although there is something to do with it. 
Um, it actually has more to do with whether or not Python has to go through the process of creating a new location. Now, the reason why I'm including this is because if you were to pass this in as a parameter to a function, you can provide little modifications to the elements and that will actually modify the value from the outside. Okay, so here, let's, uh, let's have a function. I'll just call it change. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll say data and we'll, we'll say, sorry, just data at zero is equal to 99. Okay, so here we go. We'll say change x. Okay, let me clear and we'll run it. You can see that x has obviously changed. The value 34 became 99, but you'll notice that the address didn't change. That's because it's an immutable object. And yeah, functions, if you pass an immutable object as a parameter, you can do stuff like this. Okay, now you want to see something incredibly, incredibly weird. Okay, so if you have worked with, I'm going to call it the old programming languages. Okay, sorry, anybody who's out there who's about my age. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add one to it. Okay, so I'm going to ask the question right now, will the ID change when I do this? Do, 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 do. Okay, and the answer is, of course, it will. But now watch this. Okay x is equal to x minus 1, and I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste it back in here, I'm going to clear, and I'm going to run this, because I want to show you something that really, really freaks me out. Um, take a look at this. The initial value 100 was at this location at 492. All right, this one right here, this created a brand new object at location 508, but then take a look at this. When I subtracted 1, it went back to the same place. It's like, Whoa, okay. I mean, that is incredibly, incredibly strange, but uh, it seems as though Python is kind of being smart enough. It's actually going to go and it's going to reuse places. In fact, watch this. If I said that y is equal to 100 and I print as the very last line id of y, uh, take a look what happens. Uh, it actually has used exactly the same location. All right, so the whole moral of the story is uh, what's going on with this immutable versus immutable objects, and is it really, really critical? All right, you know, so what I said in uh, 1201, if you, you, you don't really need to know about mutable versus immutable objects, but you do need to know which things you can and can't change. All right, but for anybody else who's just looking at this, what this means is the word immutable basically means if you try to assign it to a new value, you will end up with a new object, okay? So that's all that I wanted to cover in here, okay? So it's just some weird business that goes on in the world of Python, okay? And I've tried this on a few different interpreters, including our little uh, web including our little web ID. I've also tried it in PyCharm and Idle, and pretty much it works the same way. Okay.